you tell me who I am. They called you West. Jim West. Mr. West. West! Well, my name is James West. A truly great man. Brilliant. Secret Service agent. What's next? Come on, I'm waiting. Man of action. He's James West. Where's Jim West? On the Wild Wild West. Weekdays at 4, 3 Central on MeTV. Hello, I'm John Malice, and welcome to Connect With Me on this Friday morning, live on the showroom floor at Ventura TV. Today, we're going to be talking to Mike Reynolds. He is the author of Three Strikes and that proposition that's trying to change the nature of Three Strikes that's been in effect in the state of California since 1994. And Jared Gordon from the Tea Party will be here. Your phone calls are important, 265-4331. Back in just a moment. Welcome back. we got two guests here in the studio today as the election uh, inches ever so close. It's on Tuesday, November the 6th, as you know, and today is Friday. So just, you know, a few hours and counting before you go to the polls. And they open up, of course, 7 a.m. Uh, in the morning, a.m., right, on Tuesday. And I believe they close at 8 p.m. on Tuesday as well. And today we're going to be talking about Proposition 36. That is the three strikes law. The author of that uh, uh, proposition that, uh, well, actually, the author of three strikes is going to be here. Uh, Mike Reynolds and Jared Gordon of the Tea Party. Let me explain Three Strikes just for a moment. Three Strikes, as you well know, has been on the books uh, as law since 1994. Uh, this happened, of course, after uh, Kimber Reynolds, uh, Mike Reynolds' daughter, was shot and killed right here in the city of Fresno for no reason. Of course, is there ever a good reason to kill anyone? Well, after that, Mike led a charge to try to get Three Strikes passed into law. It really got a charge after the Polly Class case, uh, you might recall in Petaluma in 1994 when she was kidnapped and killed and then three strikes was pushed through. Mike Reynolds was certainly instrumental in that. Well now they're trying to repeal a part of it. That's what Prop 36 uh, uh, proponents want to do. That third strike they make, they want to make it so the non-violent offenders on that third strike is no longer a third strike. You have to commit a violent crime. Mike will explain more on that and what the polling situation is. Now we have another guest and his name is Jared Gordon. He will be talking about Prop 30 and 30 those are the tax increases. Uh, Gordon, of course, is one of the founding fathers of the Tea Party right here in the Central Valley. So live here in our studio right now is Jared Gordon and Mike Reynolds. They will be talking respectively about their uh, particular uh, topics and their subjects. Your phone calls are very important. 265-4331. Today we're talking about three strikes in California. Should they repeal uh, a portion of it or leave it as is. That's Proposition 36. And what about those other propositions? They want to increase taxes. We increase or encourage your phone calls, of course. We're back here on Connect With Me in just a moment. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the save energy, save time, save money place. The Energy Star qualified, ready, steam equipped, high efficiency Frigidaire Affinity Place. You heard right. Right now, save big on select Frigidaire laundry pairs and pay no interest when paid in full within six months. At the hometown low price, think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. 
Election Day is just a few days away. It's on Tuesday, November the 6th. We're talking about two very important issues today. We're talking about the Tea Party and what to do about some of those propositions that say they want to increase your taxes. And then we're talking about three strikes, a very controversial, uh, at least this year it is, controversial uh, topic in Proposition 36. Glad to welcome Jared Gordon from the Tea Party. And Mike, good to see Thanks you again. Me. Everybody knows who you are, right? You need no introduction. <laughs> Anyway, let's start with three strikes. And the most recent poll that I saw uh, online mm -hmm. from Los Angeles was that 63% favored changing three strikes as we know it today. Well, uh, if that does occur, what do you make of that? Uh, it probably means that it's going to pass. Um, let's keep this in mind. Uh, if people were informed of what this will in fact do, they would never vote for it. Uh, what will it do? How, well, how will it impact three strikes? Okay, what this initiative is asking is should a twice convicted serious or violent offender be uh, put away 25 to life on the commission of any new felony offense? And uh, uh, of course that's at the discretion of a prosecutor and then uh, it has to be overlooked by a judge. Uh, in fact, only about 150 cases per year actually go down under a third strike statewide, so it's a very small number. But those are very righteous cases that do, and only about a third of those are under this provision where the third strike is less than a serious or violent. Um, the, the, before you answer that question, you should really re it be, be rephrase it in this form. Should a twice convicted serious or violent offender be allowed to commit another serious or violent offense? Because that's exactly what Prop 36 is, is enabling. Twice convicted serious or violent offenders, they will release thousand, uh, thousands of our most active serious and violent criminals in California. It's going to place them back out in the streets, and there's no hope of locking them up until they commit more serious and violent crime and caught Let me just convicted. play devil's advocate just, uh, just for a sure. moment. Uh, I think what upsets people about three strikes, and uh, I've heard this over and over again. Okay, you have a twice convicted serious offender that committed a violent crime, but he goes in and steals a pack of cigarettes or mm -hmm. a bottle of Coke or a bottle of 7-Up. Should he be convicted on a third strike based on that crime? Well, it depends on what his priors were. And, and at that point, many times, only one out of every nine eligible cases, in fact, goes down on a third strike. But it does, at that point, allow a prosecutor to go back and look at what, what we're dealing with here. Who do we have in our custody? And, and to suggest that he stole a bottle of Coke a lot of times or a, 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 a bottle of liquor sometimes. If you look real closely at those cases, what started off as a shoplifting actually turns out to be a, a strong-armed robbery. He knocked down the clerk on the way out and injured him or um, encountered somebody else in the way. And it turns out to be more serious than what the initial uh, value of the item was. You can't establish uh, uh, what a value of an item is and the level of criminality that the most violent crime is committed over the yeah. value of almost nothing or little. I mean, my daughter was murdered over a simple purse snatching, less than $20. Uh, so to uh, uh, point to value and the level of criminality, there is no equation between that. These offenders are very dangerous, and if you can stop them on a low-level felony, uh, you should do so. Jared, we know you're here to talk about taxes and money, but mm -hmm. you're a member of the Tea Party, and you know, no one can comprehend what Mike Reynolds and his family has been through. To lose a daughter, uh, to lose a family member over a senseless act. What do you make of this three strikes uh, proposition? Well, we think it's deceptive to the voters. And, In what way? Uh, because what it ultimately is eliminating are some potentially serious violent crimes. And Mike, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that some forms of arson might not even be included. Arson, kidnapping, assault on a peace officer, unless it's with a machine gun, which means that you can use a bazooka, you know? I mean, yeah. we could sit here and go through a whole list of them. There, uh, there are some very frightening uh, crimes that are coming out of the list. Right. Some 9,000 people, if I have the numbers, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, in the last 18 years have been convicted and sent to jail over the three strikes law. Yes. If Proposition 36 passes, how many of those cases will be overturned and maybe some of those uh, prisoners let out? Uh, our California legislative analyst sets the number at about 3,000. 
Uh, but these are offenders that are much higher than any of the people that have been, been left out, let out so far under uh, a realignment. Those are all non-serious, non-violent offenders, and we see an uptick in crime just from that. These, they're making no pretenses about it. Uh, these are 100%, at least twice convicted, serious or violent offenders. They're a whole new level of offender, much more dangerous. There's no initiative on this ballot that, does, that places citizens in the direct line of fire of violent and serious criminals. Do you think people have lost sight of what Three Strikes has done the last 18 years? I think people have gotten complacent because crime has gone down so much. Uh, it's in part because of Three Strikes. I think there's no doubt about that. It's in part because of improved policing and uh, changes in our, our culture and our demographics. Uh, there's probably even some other reasons that we haven't identified that crime has gone down. But because crime is not thought to be as serious an issue anymore, people, um, they've just forgotten how bad it was in the early um, 90s. Mm -hmm. And I, I fear that, you know, that forgetfulness is going to come back uh, again and we will be facing a similar level of criminality if, if we don't stick to the solutions that worked. All right, we're talking with Jared Gordon of the Tea Party. Mike Reynolds, of course, the author of Three Strikes, 265-4331 is the number. Mike, how do you explain the L.A. County D.A., what I read online? Uh, Steve Cooley down in Los Angeles, of course, uh, trying to convince dozens of other D.A.s, not only in his area, but throughout the entire state of California, to try to, you know, soften up on Three Strikes. Even though it's on the books, mm -hmm. you know, kind of go light on these guys. Don't, don't worry about it. Well... Prop 36 is supported by three of California's 58 district attorneys. Uh, everybody else has said no. Have you talked uh, to, to Steve Cooley at all um, about he, this? He actually came all the way to Fresno uh, to assure me that he had no intention of changing three strikes and that he was going to leave it alone. What questions uh, did you have for him? Uh, well, uh, I first of all want to make mention that I was in the presence of two other elected district attorneys, the one from Kern County and our Fresno County district attorney, when that current conversation transpired. Elizabeth Egan? Yes. Okay. And we, we, uh, uh, that commitment was made virtually at a table uh, during the course of a lunch. The trip was made specifically and only for that purpose to assure me that he had no intention of changing California's three strikes law. Uh, he has obviously gone back on that word, and he made that commit commitment to many, many other district attorneys throughout the state. Um, Steve Cooley, He's in favor of Prop 36, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. He's a big proponent of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, however, he has also been a, uh, a big supporter of Three Strikes. I mean, I, uh, I've got a videotape of him praising how well Three Strikes uh, works and that it should be left alone, and that was recorded just a, a very short time before he actually came out with this initiative. He's yeah. a very funny guy. Uh, but let me assure you, all law enforcement in the state of California, all major law enforcement, the district attorney's association, Association, the Sheriff's Association, Police Officers Association, including the Los Angeles Police Officers and Sheriff's Associations, are all against Prop 36. All right, we're talking to Jared Gordon and Mike Reynolds. Uh, we're going to be back more uh, with this program to talk about three strikes, and Jared will talk about some of these other propositions, and maybe, you know, how does crime affect us financially? Maybe Jared can address that question as well. 265-4331 if you want to call in. It's time to play the high bob game. Simply watch the bob. Oh, I wanted to hear what that lady said. <laughs> As I was saying, simply watch the Bob Newhart show and count how many times people say hi, Bob. Well, why don't we uh, start things off? Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Wakey, wakey, Aiden, baby. Sorry. Try again. Darn it. Everybody loves the High Bob game. This is the greatest game of the history. Weeknights at 10:30, 9:30 Central on MeTV. We're back talking about uh, three strikes, and let me uh, just kind of clarify, and maybe Mike can, can override me on this, but this is what a strike is. If you get one strike against you, or two strikes, this is what it entails. It involves murder, robbery, burglary, firearm-related uh, crimes, and felony sex crimes. Mike, did I leave anything out? Well, yeah, there, there's, okay. there's a whole list of them. But uh, I those think, are the main ones, though. <clears throat> yeah, those are big ones. Uh, uh, How about arson? I didn't uh, mention arson. It's in there. Uh, okay. Arson is a serious or violent crime. Uh, residential burglary is uh, a serious crime, which is also a strike, and, and it's very important. That would be coming out of this, as we know there's a rise in residential burglaries. Right. And there's a relationship. When, when people uh, burglarize your home, they a lot of times, uh, uh, if you walk in on a burglar, or he walks in on you, uh, you're going to be the loser on that deal. 
And, yeah. and what we see is uh, uh, if you can reduce burglary, you also reduce homicide and rape. And we've cut burglary in half along with every other crime in California. Let's go to a call here. Good morning. You're on Connect with me with Jared Gordon and Mike Reynolds. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. I want to comment on the free strike law. Okay. Go ahead. I feel like that if the street, if the three strike law was put out, that my dad would be out of prison. He's been in prison for self defense crime, and my brother was in jail three strikes because he was trying to provide for his family, and now he's been doing jail state time because wouldn't nobody hire him because of his background. So how do you see that as affecting the three strike law? Uh, what 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 were your relatives? What were they convicted of? What was that? What were the crimes that they committed? My father-in-law was convicted of self defense. Somebody was trying to attack him. Okay, well, you, and you what can't did be convicted of self defense? Okay, now what did he do though? What did he do in response? He was a, he was being shot at. And so he shot at them. They didn't die. They're still alive. But he's in prison. He's been in prison for 17 years. So what were his first strikes if he's in there for three strikes? He was in there for, he's an ex-gangbanger. I'm not going to lie to you. He's an ex-gangbanger. It was a, a gangbanger that was shooting at him. So he shot uh, other people in previous convictions is that what you're telling me yes well in all due respect i think he's where he needs to be uh you know you can't go around shooting people you know that's why three strikes is there i, I feel bad that that uh, okay, you well did. i understand that but at the same time you're sitting on national tv saying that um you know what about the child molesters that get out i don't see them getting three strikes that's yeah wrong. Child molestation uh, is also a strike, but if you get a, a child molestation, generally, if uh, it's a life without parole, I mean that that uh, they're not getting out. Uh, but child molesters. No, several people that have lived in houses that have been ran by sex offenders. So how do you, you know? There's different levels of sex offense, and, and I'm, I'm not sure you have to go on a specific case, but just like rape, there's statutory rape, which is an 18-year-old having sex with a 17-year-old, and while that's a crime and called rape, it doesn't fall under, uh, uh, you know, the level of, uh, of a uh, violent rape where somebody literally drags you off by the air and, and uh, you know, beats you up and rapes you. And in California, public exposure is um, a sex offender registration crime, so... The, the proverbial guy who, um, you know, flashes himself from his trench coat, although um, I'm not even sure that's a felony, that is a sex offender registration crime, yeah. um, as is people who are publicly urinating uh, and are exposed. If they're caught for that, they can be charged for exposure and can... Is and that a strike? Offenders. No, I, I, Sorry, I don't, I don't think so. No, there, that, a strike has to be a felony. Yeah, it has to be. A, a, for the first two, they not only have to be felonies, but they have to be serious or violent felonies. There's three kinds of crimes. There's, there's uh, uh, infractions, which means like a traffic ticket. There's misdemeanors, and then there's felonies. The felonies are the worst. Now, to get strikes, you have to have a very special category of felony, either serious or violent felonies. That means the worst of the worst. The first two have to be that. So in order for your father-in-law or... Or uh, was it your brother uh, to be in on a third strike? They have to have at least two serious or violent prior uh, felony convictions, and they have to understand, uh, regardless of how bad their criminal past was, all they have to do is stop doing crime. And I don't think that's too much to ask. Are you still okay, there? So at the same time, in his defense, in most of their defenses, this society does not give an ex-offender an opportunity to get a job to do something else. So how do you figure that it, he can stop doing crime when he got kids to feed? I guess what she's saying is kind of a double-edged sword. You, you do one strike, you come out of prison, no one wants to hire you. Well, that's not true. It depends on what your your uh, uh, capabilities are, and and uh, uh, you know I, I, when you could easily get out and do uh, uh, yard work. 
uh, uh, there could be uh, hauling. There, there's all kinds of manual labor jobs that don't require uh, the kind of criminal background. Uh, you know, if he was working for the school district, yeah, there's going to be a criminal uh, uh, looking, you know, back at his his career. But there's many jobs that don't require that. I don't know what is what is his training. What did he do in real life? I mean, what was his job? What job did he have? So all those, all those uh, play a factor as to whether or not you get a job. Uh, yeah. they, they play a major factor. And there are some positions where they, they do a background check. Others, it doesn't matter. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's it's not nearly as critical. Yeah. All right. I'm sure you get a lot of people that uh, have the same uh, question for you. That's not the first time you've heard that. But let's take another call before we run okay. out of time here and have to go to break. Good morning. You're on Connect with me. How are you? Hi. Is this uh, John Mello? Yeah. Hi. How are you? Hi. My name is Scott. I'm, I'm doing all right. You know, you guys are talking about how the state's going to let out, you know, people that are, you know, convicted felons, and, um, you know, I just, I just, I've been robbed 15 times since I moved back to the city, people I haven't even known, and the police station doesn't do much to help, my cousin's in internal affairs, I don't know if that's why, but, you know, that frightens me, because I'm disabled, you know, they're going to let these people out? That would That's what will happen, uh, and uh, it's a, a very dangerous policy, and I would urge you and your friends to vote against Prop 36. That's the first defense, is uh, make sure that convicted serious and violent offenders don't get out of prison. That's right. And the okay. second problem with this is it weakens the law dramatically. It makes it tougher for law enforcement to actually put away criminals that are repeat offenders. And the third and most damaging thing to the criminal justice system is, is it destroys the deterrent value of this law. Uh, so for every offender that is locked up on a minor crime, many, many more have made a conscious decision that, you know what, I think I'm going to stop doing crime. And, and in many cases, they've left the state. I just don't understand the police. For one, there's a, a convicted, twice convicted felon, violent offender. He broke into my home, robbed me blind, and I picked out the photo line. I picked him out in the photo lineup. The DA didn't want to pick up charges on the guy. I don't understand that. Well, I, I don't. That's a violent offense, a home invasion, right? Yeah, that that's uh, actually goes in the violent category. Uh, you were there at the time, right? Correct. Uh, I was asleep. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, and I'm not sure if he was armed when he went in or not. Sometimes they, they pick up a weapon once they get into the house and, and that they can get around that. But either way, it's serious or violent. Both of them are strikes, and he should have been uh, struck out. And I don't know why, if they couldn't get a convic conviction on it. Maybe he pled it down to a second strike. I don't know. I appreciate well, your I phone call. 95% on the photo lineup. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I don't know. Each one of these cases you have to look at individually. They're, yeah, they're different. Each case is different. But I appreciate your phone call and stay safe, all right? Thank you. Um, quickly, what kind of a financial impact does, does crime have in our society? You're a Tea Party guy. You can probably answer that. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's hard to quantify, but it has a number of impacts beyond just the amount of, of robber, or robbery and, and, and uh you know, stuff that's taken from people. It also reduces trust and impacts the rule of law. Yeah. All right. We're here with Jared Gordon and Mike Reynolds. Some um, very good phone calls. We're going to come back and talk more about three strikes. And we'll talk about these other propositions as well. And your phone calls if you want to call in at 265-4331. Is taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want. This Amana Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is now just $6.99. And this Heavy Duty Maytag Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is only $8.99. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. We are here talking about three strikes, and we are talking with Mike Reynolds and Jared uh, Gordon of the Tea Party. Let me ask you quickly about Prop 30. It says it increases taxes on someone who is making more than $250,000 a year for seven years. Prop 30, you're obviously against it. Why? I am, but Why? Your, your summary is incorrect. Okay. Uh, in addition to increasing income taxes, Prop 30 also increases sales taxes, and by increasing sales taxes... By a quarter of a percent. That's right. It increases sales taxes right. by a quarter of a percent... For four years. everyone for four years on gas, on clothing, on food, 
on all the things that we thought were exempt from sales tax because it's a constitutional amendment and the way that it's written it actually will effectively preempt the um, sales tax exclusions that are already those in, in favor say law. you know the state's in trouble we need the money the state has more money than it had last year if we reverted to the budget that we had last year we would not be in trouble we are in trouble because we are spending more money we're spending it on wasteful things like high-speed rail we're spending it on additional debt service that we've incurred because we've spent so irresponsibly in the past we've increased the pay of state workers in fact we almost doubled the legislative workers total compensation package you know that's the kind of thing that, that sacramento is spending money on they're not spending money on schools they're not spending money on teachers that's where they should be spending the money and instead they're going to hold the schools and your kids hostage to get more money to play with what about prop 38 increases taxes on earnings using a sliding scale for 12 years and uh, the money goes to the schools apparently that's what they're saying on prop 38 right so prop 38 uh, increases um, a good portion of Californians income taxes it applies more at the high end and you so say that a means good that portion what does that mean it, it means that doesn't mean everyone right then. in California not everyone pays sales ta or pays income taxes right so for the people who do pay income taxes um, and particularly for people at the higher end uh, especially small businesses which normally file as individuals right. in California they're gonna pay a heck of a lot more in income taxes so for a small business uh, owner like myself um, I'm looking at more than a thousand dollar tax increase per year and prop 30 it passes prop 32 prevents uh, any uh, paycheck deductions going to any political purposes or uh, organizations right. uh, like say the teachers union okay. prop, prop 32 does two things it prohibits paycheck uh, deductions by both unions and corporations and it prevents unions and corporations from giving directly to candidates you're for against that we are absolutely in favor of prop 32 it is the number one way to get rid of special interest power in the state of california all right back here with the phones uh good morning you're on connect with me how are you this is global tell okay <laughs> well apparently uh, somebody put us on hold there i don't know they wanted to get in but they put us on hold anyway okay prop 37 the food label issue you, we've all seen the ads about the genetically uh, processed foods and we want the labels there and we want you're against this one i am and, and people who are in favor of genetic uh genetically engineered organi organism labeling um they should understand that they are being played they are being tricked by a trial lawyer who's the one who wrote this initiative. The initiative is not going to help increase consumer knowledge about whether or not food is genetically engineered. I take it you're against. Yes, I'm strongly <laughs> against it. And, and uh, he, I, I, I just want to briefly explain why. The, the whole initiative is written so that this guy and his law firm, who specialize in suing small businesses under Prop 65, can have a whole new market that they can sue small businesses over. All and right. it basically you're innocent until proven guilty even the people who have natural foods can't label their foods properly under right. prop 37. we got two minutes left let's take one more quick phone call good morning quickly you're on connect with me hi i'd like to find out i know you already passed 32 but what is this thing on the advertisement that they say oh, i forgot what it's coming out <laughs> well, you better hurry up because we're going to run out of time. The, the negative, oh. the negatives to claim that there's an exemption for super PACs, right? That's what you're talking about. Yeah, Prop 32. She mentioned yeah. it prevents the uh, paychecks from going to any unions or so the exemption, political purposes. Right. The exemption they're talking about is that Supreme Court precedent, Citizens United, and obviously California voters can't change what the First Amendment says and what the Supreme Court says the First Amendment says. That's all it is. Prop 32 does everything that California can do to limit special interest contributions and money going into campaigns. Quickly, I want to go back to Mike Reynolds, and we only have a minute left, so if you can kind of condense your answer. If, if, if this proposition passes uh, on three strikes, Prop 36, what will it do to crime? Should we be afraid? Well, I would the most assuredly uh, tell you that yes, there is, like How I said, will it impact crime? It impacts crime three ways it brings more criminals to the streets and serious and violent criminals the, the most active in California. Uh, two, it makes the laws much weaker so it's going to be tougher for police to put criminals back in jail and prison. And three, it destroys the deterrent value of this law. So those three in combination uh, are a real surefire formula for more crime, plain and simple. 
Right. So you're against Prop 36, and you're against many of these propositions that uh, increase 30 taxes. Against 30 and 38 and 37. Yes, on 32. Uh, the Central Valley Tea Party urges you to go to centralvalleyteaparty.com. You can get our complete voter guide for candidates and propositions in the upcoming election. Okay. Jared Gordon, always good to see you. Come back again. Sure. Love to have you. And Mike, you're always welcome here. Well, you thank know you. That. Thank you. Thank Jared, you. Jared, it's good seeing you. Good to see okay. you again, Mike. Okay. All right. Jared Gordon, Mike Reynolds. We're back on Monday. Uh, Brandy Orth is going to be here. She is the Fresno County Registrar. She's going to talk, talk about the, the polling situations and how ballots are being counted, including the absentee ballots. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.